اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین والصلاة والسلام على اشرف الانبیاء والمرسلین حبیب الہ العالمین ابی القاسم المصطفی محمد وعلى اہل بیتہ الطیبین الطاہرین المعصومین الذین اذہب اللہ عنہم الرجس وطہرہم تطہیرا اللہم صل على محمد وآل محمد ولعنت اللہ على اعدائہم اجمعین الى یوم الدین صل اللہ علیک یا رسول اللہ صل اللہ علیک یا مولای و ابن مولای یا ابا عبداللہ یا رحمت اللہ الواسع و یا باب نجات الامہ ویا عبرت کل مومن و مومن یا غریب یا مظلوم کربلا سیدی علیتنا کننا معکم فنفوز فوزا عظیما السلام علیک یا ابا عبداللہ وعلى الأرواح التي حلت بفنائك عليكم مني جميعا سلام الله أبدا ما بقيت وبقي الليل والنهار ولا جعله الله آخر العهد مني لزيارتكم السلام على الحسين وعلى ابن الحسين وعلى أولاد وعلى أصحاب الحسين السلام عليك وعلى أخيك أبي الفضل العباس وعلى أختك الحوراء زينب وعلى أم البنين ورحمة الله وبركاته Now we go towards Karbala with those Rotating around the grave of Abi Abdullah and Abu Fadl Al Abbas, Hussein, Ya Hussein, Hussein, Masha Allah, Hussein, Ya. Hussain, Hussain. One more time, Hussain. Yeah. Hussain. Be Abi 
انت وامي واهلي ونفسي ومالي يا ابن رسول الله we send our loudest salawat to the shrine of Abi Abdullah Al Hussein and his brother Abu Al Fadl Al Abbas on this night. Bi barakati Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. One of the universal laws that all of Allah's creations fall under is the law of give and receive all of Allah's creations there is no creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created in this universe and this world does not fall under the law of give and receive for example all the trees all the plants they give and they receive. They receive what they need, what it needs from the soil, from the earth, and it gives. There are some trees that give us good fruits, good plants that we can use, and there are some plants that don't give anything positive to us human beings. Animals. There are some animals that they receive, they eat the grass, they eat the plants, they eat what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set for them to use from this earth. Again, we see some animals, they give back as they take, and some animals they don't. But they are there, so the cycle continues. Allah's most superior creation, which is the human being, also falls under that criteria, under that law. The human being also gives and receives. But the human beings are different than the animals. The animals, they are here, they are created they live to eat but human beings they eat to be able to survive human beings fall under three categories if we want to categorize the human being on how much they take in and how much they give back we have three categories the first category of human beings of mankind is that there are some individuals the amount of things they give back to society is less than the amount of things they take from society there are some human beings they take in so much from the resources from the human society but in return when it comes when the time comes for that human being for that entity for that superior creation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the best of his creations which is the aql when it's time for him to give something back you find that he gives less than what he took that's the first category the second category are those who the same amount they take from society, the same amount they give back. And those are individuals who are living in what we call poverty. They take in only the amount that they need to survive. And what they can give back is limited. Those are individuals in the human society that are living a poor life. So the amount that they take in of resources, of power, of energy, is the same as they, their ability to give back. But what we want to concentrate on tonight, brothers and sisters in the majlis, is the third category, and that is those 
who take only a minute amount of resources from the human society, but in return, they give tenfolds, twentyfolds. In some situations, they give 100%, 200% back to the society. Such individuals are classified as the winners. Homol Faizun. But the first category are those who are classified as the losers. Homol Aksarun. The ones who are losers in society. The ones that come, they take, 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 take. But when the day comes that you require from them to give back to society, he says, I'm sorry, this is my capacity. Tonight's character, tonight's man, in terms of how much he gave back, is a unique character. As all of those characters that surrounded Ahlul Bayt السلام, were all unique. This character, he only took a certain amount of resources from the Holy Prophet and Ahlul Bayt, from the human society at that time. But what he gave is he gave all that he had for the sake of Islam and for the sake of Ahlul Bayt. The verse or the verses that we wanted to start the majlis and I wanted us inshallah to ponder on and to think about and to take a lesson tonight when we go out of the majlis is in Surah at tawbah chapter number 9 verses 111 to verses 112 so I can read these verses inshallah and bring barakah to the majlis and inshallah I have energy and you have energy inshallah to continue these majalis these nights I want a very loud salawat ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad <laughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله اشترى من المؤمنين أنفسهم وأموالهم بأن لهم الجنة يقاتلون في سبيل الله فيقتلون ويقتلون وعدا عليه حقا في التوراة والإنجيل والقرآن ومن أوفى بعهده من الله فاستبشروا ببيعكم الذي بايعتم به وذلك هو الفوز العظيم التائبون العابدون الحامدون السائحون الراكعون الساجدون الآمرون بالمعروف والناهون على المنكر والحافظون لحدود الله وبشر المؤمنين صل على محمد وآل محمد the commentary of these verses and inshallah I will go into the lecture. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, in Allah ishtara min al anfusahum wa amwalahum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has purchased the mu'min, the one that has obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, followed his commands, followed the messengers he has sent, followed the prophets, followed all the scriptures he is a mu'min now here allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says you have a you have a choice you have an option whether you can become an individual who gets into a contract with dunya or you are an individual who come and become come and sign a contract with me allah subhanahu wa ta'ala there are times individuals they go to dunya and dunya only they don't care about akhirah but the mu'mineen are those 
who use dunya for their akhirah. So you go and sign a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has purchased from the believers their lives and their wealth. For their, what happens in return? A contract is between someone who is selling you something and you who the, you are classified as the purchaser. There must be something that you are gaining and there must be a contract. So what are you gaining when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is buying from you your life and your wealth? What are you gaining? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بِأَنَّ لَهُمُ الْجَنَّةِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you the paradise. Okay, what is your responsibility in this contract? Your responsibility in this contract is يُقَاتِلُونَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they slay, they fight for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remember a couple of nights ago? يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِن تَنْصُرُوا اللَّهَ يَنْصُرْكُمْ وَيُثَبِّتْ أَقْدَامَكُمْ When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls you to stand in aid and in help for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is the cause. They fight in His cause. Now when we use the word fight, we don't actually mean in our daytime, in our day today, you take arms necessarily and you go and fight no sometimes you are fighting your nafs and nafs al amara bisu sometimes you engage in a battle with your own self if you overpower yourself then you engage in a battle with shaitan with iblis with the devil with satan Again, if you are successful in overpowering shaitan, then you move on another level. You start giving back to the community, to the society. They fight in his cause and they slay. Now, sometimes you overpower, you become victorious as a result of your hard work, fighting injustice, trying to prevail justice, and sometimes, no, you are slain. But because you were fighting for the right, because you was on the right path, if you are slain, if you are, God forbid, defeated, then you will be counted as a shaheed. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and they slay, and they are slain. A promise. Allah promises you, brothers and sisters. Here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa'dan, a promise. Allah is promising you. There are times individuals, human beings, mankind, he promises you something. He may give you or he may do wafa to his ahad. He may do as he promised and he may not. Sometimes we forget what we promised. And in this case, I want to make a remark. And that is that there are some children when the parents promise them a specific thing and after a while the parent doesn't bring, for example, what they promised the child, the child, he himself comes and reminds the parent, Daddy, Mommy, you promised me to give me something. You didn't. My eight-year-old, his birthday was in July. But in July, it is summer holidays and we had to go away. We couldn't organize a birthday party for him. So after we came back, we came back in September, beginning of school. As soon as we came back, he said, Daddy, I think you've forgotten something. I told him what? He said, my birthday. We promised him that when we come back, we will do him a party. And we did. When you promise something, المؤمنون المؤمن إذا وعد وفا this is one of the symptoms of a mu'min, one of the signs of a mu'min. If you promise someone something, you do it. If you know you can't do it, don't promise. Because it will stay in there. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is different. Allah is Allah. Allah is the creator. When he promises the mu'min, he will give what he promises. وَعْدًا عَلَيْهِ حَقَّ فِي التَّوْرَاتِ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ وَالْقُرْآنِ And this promise is not only to the Muslims. This promise has been there for time in the Gospels, in the Torah, in the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ever since has promised mankind that if you come and engage in a contract with me, your Lord, your Creator, I shall promise you heaven. It's not something new. But it is mankind, he himself. He neglects to understand the reality of his Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I promised all the nations. I promised all through my prophets. When the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the beginning were... Salli ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. When the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala were propagating their messages, they were propagating what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had told them. There are times when you go to the market, you want something so the supermarket or the store will provide it for you. Again, the law of supply and demand. There are times when the people, when they used to come and speak to those prophets, they used to tell them, what have you brought for us? The prophet does not work in a situation, in a way that he provides what the audience want. The audience has to listen to the Prophet what he has brought. Here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying to the mu'mineen, وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِعَهْدِهِ And the one that does his part of the contract, the one that does as he had promised, and here, and who is more faithful to his covenant, your oath, then his reward is that he should rejoice in the bargain. When you become in a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will give you more than your money's worth, more than the amount that you have given him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you give him one dirham or one dinar or one dollar, he will give you tenfold more. It is narrated by Imam Al-Jawad, salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Is that if you give to the majlis of Abi Abdullah al Hussein one dinar, how much do you think Allah will reward you? If you give one dinar to the majlis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, Imam Jawad, the Imam, Hujjatullah, the infallible, the ambassador of the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that Allah will give you elf elf. Do you know how much elf elf is? A million. You give one dirham, one dinar to the majlis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will reward you with one million dinars. But you have to believe in that. There are some of us, he says, okay, one dirham, one dollar, here one dollar. Tomorrow he comes, where is my one million? Brother, sister, it doesn't work like that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises you. But at the same time, you have to be patient. Now that one million dollar he may give you in this lifetime, where you may spend it and not know that you have spent one million dollars. Are there not individuals? They go out to shopping, they wanting to buy a bottle of milk, they come out with buying a whole trolley. And they don't know, they're not aware that they've spent so much. Money won't be worth anything. 
But when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to reward you, He might reward you in a different way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says through Imam Jawad alayhi salam that I will reward you one million times more. That may not necessarily be in your wealth. It might be in your health. It might be in your children. It might be in your family. It might not even be in this world. It might be in the hereafter. Salla ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. وَمَنْ أَوْفَى بِعَهْدِهِ مِنَ اللَّهِ فَاسْتَبْشِرُوا بِبَيْعِكُمُ الَّذِي بَايَعْتُمْ بِهِ وَذَلِكَ هُوَ الْفَوْزُ الْعَظِيمُ And that is the supreme achievement that there isn't anything more superior, more supreme than that achievement. What achievement? The achievement that you have engaged in a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, this next ayah is very important. It describes the qualities, the attributes of the mu'mineen. Now, there are nine attributes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran. I will recite them and it is up to you and me we don't need anyone to tell us if we fall in these categories. We can make our own decisions, right? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Sallu ala Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad. At-Ta'ibun. The first category, which is those who turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in repentance. Now, there are times we make mistakes. We are human beings. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created infallible ma'sumin alayhim salam and he has created human beings normal like us. We make mistakes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us the ability to make mistakes because he is Al-Ghaffar Al-Rahim. He wants to tell you that I am the one that will accept your repentance. He wants you to go back to him or every time. At-Ta'ibun. Imam alayhi salam says that if you after Salat al-Asr, when you finish your afternoon prayers, you are still sitting on your prayer mat, you repeat this word 70 times. Which word, O oh, Imam? The Imam says, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi. After Dhuhr and Asr prayers, you are still sitting on your prayer mat. Don't worry. Life will continue. Give a little bit more to words, your prayers, your salah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whoever is waiting for you can wait a couple of minutes more. Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi 70 times. The Imam says, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promises the abd, the mu'min, that before you stand from your prayer mat, all of your past, present, and future sins to come, they will be wiped away. What a better reward do you want, brothers and sisters? I know young men, young ladies. They say, Sayyidina, we are young. We made mistakes. Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our repentance? I say yes. After your afternoon prayers, you are still sitting on your prayer mat. Repeat, Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa atubu ilayhi. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will wipe away. He will press delete. Everything will be gone. He will even make the malaika forget that they have written all of these mistakes. No one will know. No one in this existence will know that you one day looked at that lady across the road. No one in this universe will know that one day you thought of this so-and-so in a bad way. 
You listened to music. You spoke this bad word. You disobeyed your parents. You lied. You went to a haram place. You thought about going to a haram place. No one will know. Delete, that's it, gone. Erased. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you have to make the decision. If you are an individual where you weren't honest with yourself and you weren't honest with your family for a period of time, you weren't honest with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, dress this way, don't present yourself in a particular way in front of the community, but you did. For one day, for one year, for 10 years, you got used to it. Changing is always difficult. Demolishing is easy. But when it comes, when you have to build, you will have to put extra power, extra resources. But it only takes one decision. I was saying to the youth last night, what a better place, what a better time to start and make that decision and make that promise in the majlis of Imam Hussein alayhi salam when you are crying for the masaib of Abi Abdullah al Hussein when you are crying for the masaib of Bibi Zainab when you remember the little Ruqayya and you cry when you remember Ali al Azhar and what he had to go through it is then that you make that promise between yourself and between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Oh Allah, in the majlis of Imam Hussein, I have made the decision to change. In the majlis of Imam Hussein, I have made the decision to perfect my hijab. In the majlis of Imam Hussein, I have made this decision to be honest with you, O oh Allah. Al-Ta'ibun, Al-Abidun, those who worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ibadah. Ibadah is the soul of religion, is the soul of deen. If you are lacking in that aspect, then know that what you call Islam is lifeless, is without a ruh, is without a soul. So let's work on the aspect of ibadah. Concentrate a little bit more on our salah. Concentrate a little bit more when we are reciting the verses of the Holy Quran. Al-Hamidun, the ones that thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for all their blessings. Al-Sa'ihun, Al-Raki'un, Al-Sajidun, Al-Amirun bil-Ma'roof, Wal-Nahun al-Munkar. I have comments to make on each of these, but I, time is passing. Inshallah, in future nights I will explain. Al-Amirun bil-Ma'roof, those who engage in Amr bil Ma'roof, Wannahi Anil Munkar. When you see something good, someone do something good, praise it, encourage it. In joining the good, you will get the thawab as well. But vice versa, when you see something Munkar, if you see Munkar and you don't move, you don't do anything, it's as if you had engaged in that munkar as well. They came to prophets, one of the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They asked him, why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only a small minority portion of the ummah were making sins? Why did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punish all the nation, all the ummah? Let's say 40% of the ummah were making sins. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala brought down this, the punishment on 100%. The Prophet of Allah said, because that 60% were observing these 40% committing sins and making mistakes, but they never said a word. Why? Because the fact that you see someone doing a munkar and you don't move, you don't say anything, that means that that is the beginning of the demolishing of your society. The next day, God forbid, it will be your son, your daughter. It will be in your family. It's like a virus. It will go around. 
It will go around, brothers and sisters. But Amr bil Ma'roof and Nahi anil Munkar has criteria. There are some people who know how to go and encourage someone to do something or discourage someone when they are doing something. Take them aside. Only speak to them quietly, in a good manner, in a good way. Brother, sister, my son, my daughter. You don't do things like that. What you are doing will have negative aspects in your life. Maybe you won't see it now, but your future family, your children, when they grow up, they will see the negative aspects of your actions now. Sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. Al-Amiruna bil Ma'roof. والناهون عن المنكر والحافظون لحدود الله وبشر المؤمنين. At the end of this verse, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Give glad tidings to the mu'minin, to those individuals who practice, and all of these nine signs fall on them." Tonight's character, Habib ibn Madahir al-Asadi. Habib was an individual who was present at the time of the Holy Prophet of Islam Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alihi Wasallam He observed the Holy Prophet Now when I speak about this character try and relate to this character This is a character that he gave back to the Islamic society, to the human society more than he took. Habib was a character that recorded riwayat. He listened, he observed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam and learned a lot from the Holy Prophet. And not only that, he practiced what he learned. Then he became a loyal companion to Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib salawatullahi wa salamuhu alayhi. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. He was there at the time of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. And he accompanied Abi Abdullah al Hussein on the day of Ashura. Habib, on the day of Ashura, he was 75 years old. He was the leader of his tribe. He was very well known in Kufa. He was one of the tribal leaders in the city of Kufa. These individuals, ever since Amir al muminin alayhi salam came to the city of Kufa, they moved with him and they lived there in that part of Iraq. And they noticed how people dealt with Ali ibn Abi Talib, how they stole Khilafah, how they oppressed Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. He observed how people dealt with Imam Hassan alayhi salam. Because Habib joined in in every battle under the command of Amir al muminin Ali ibn Abi Talib Salawatullahi alayhi Every time one of the companions of the Imam used to pass away on the battlefield Habib used to come to Imam alayhi salam He used to say to the Imam, Imam when is my time? I am waiting for shahada. I have a contract with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has rewarded me that I will get shahada. Imam Amir al muminin alayhi salam informed him that there will be a day that you will gain the best of martyrdoms. Days went, days passed. In the time of Abi Abdullah al Hussein, one day Habib ibn Mazahir al Asadi is riding on his horseback in the city of Kufa. Who does he meet? He meets Maytham al Tamar, another great character that gave a lot 
to the Islamic society. Maytham. Maytham wa ma adraka ma Maytham. He used to go and sit by Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam and learn. Ali ibn Abi Talib used to give him many secrets. One day, this is how much Ali ibn Abi Talib loved his companions. Ali ibn Abi Talib was walking in the city of Kufa. Maytham sees the Imam. It appears that Maytham had to go somewhere but couldn't find anyone to sit down by his dates. So he said, oh Imam, can I ask you for, uh, can I request something from you? Imam says yes. He said, Imam, I have, I have to go somewhere, but I can't find anyone to look after my dates. He was a date seller. Maytham at Tamar. Imam alayhi salam, this is the relationship between Ahlul Bayt and their companions. Because once you give something, you will expect to receive something as well. So Ali ibn Abi Talib, being the commander of the believers, being the Khalifa of Muslimin, sat down in the marketplace in Kufa selling dates. Maytham al Tamar went. He finished what he had to do and he came back. Close brackets, come back to the story of Habib ibn Mudhar and Maytham al Tamar. They both meet, both on horseback. Their horses came very close. Habib faces Maytham. He says, I see a day, O oh Maytham. I see a day that a man will be crucified on top of a palm tree and they will cut his tongue and they will crucify him and cut off his limbs. Will you be there to see that day, O Maytham? Maytham says, yes, and I have heard that there will be a man that will dye his beard with the blood of his head. And that will be his sacrifice for the Imam of his time. Will you do as the Imam had informed you, O Habib? There were people sitting on the side. They heard the conversation between Habib and Maytham. They said to themselves, we have never seen two individuals lie to themselves so much. What are these people saying? One of them is saying to the other, I see a man crucified. They cut his tongue, they cut his limbs. The other one is saying to the other one, I see a man, he will dye his beard with the blood of his head on the plains of Karbala. They say, these guys, what are they saying? Habib departs, Maytham goes away. One other companion of Amir al-Mu'mineen alayhi salam comes and asks those individuals sitting aside, have you met Maytham or have you met Habib? They said yes, they were just here, they were discussing something. So one of them will be crucified, the other one will be killed and beheaded. This companion, Rushaid al-Hajari, he said to them, yes, but I think they made them forgot to tell Habib that his head will be, the reward of his head will be 100 dinars. These guys sitting on the side said to themselves that this third one even lies even more than the other two. Days went until the day they, they brought the captives. Maytham al Tamar got crucified. They cut off his tongue. They, they kept him there until he passed away on that palm tree. But days went until Habib, Habib's head was hung, was wrapped to the head of a horse when the captives came passing in the marketplace in Kufa, Habib's head was amongst the head of the companions. That is what Ahlul Bayt had informed their companions how they are going to die. Habib ibn Mazahir, when did he join Abi Abdullah al Hussein in Karbala? As you know, brothers and sisters, Ubaidillah ibn Ziyad 
who was put in charge of running the affairs of the city of Kufa, had raised the security level until the last levels, which meant that all the entrances and the doors of exits that people used to come in and leave, all the doors of Kufa, were monitored in a way where they captured anyone they thought that was going towards Karbala to join the camp of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. So Habib is well known to be one of the companions of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And he himself and other companions of Imam Hussein, before the arrival of Muslim, Muslim ibn Aqil to the city of Kufa, they were gathering oaths of allegiance from the Shia, from the followers of Imam Hussein, for Abi Abdullah al Hussein. So they were very active. They were known to the security services at that time. So he was not able to leave in the daylight to go towards Karbala. I think on the 4th or 5th of Muharram, he receives a letter from Imam Hussein alayhi salam. I will read you the content of the letter that the Imam has sent to Habib ibn Mudahir al-Asadi. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Min al-Hussein ibn Ali ila al-Rajul al-Faqih. Now look at how the Imam describes this man. Habib was a alim. Habib had memorized the Holy Quran. Habib, when he used to recite the Holy Quran after Salat al-Asha, after the evening prayers, he used to complete reciting the whole Quran until Salat al-Fajr, until the morning prayers. كان يختم القرآن في ليلة واحدة. He used to finish the Holy Quran in one night. من الحسين بن علي عليه السلام إلى الرجل الفقي حبيب بن مظاهر. أما بعد يا حبيب أو حبيب فأنت تعلم قرابتنا من رسول الله. You know how close we are to the Holy Prophet of Islam. وأنت أعرف بنا من غيرك. You know us better than others. وَأَنْتَ ذُو شِيمَةٍ وَغِيرَةٍ You have honor. You are an individual who has dignity. فَلَا تَبْخَلْ عَلَيْنَا بِنَفْسِكِ Do not save your soul and your life and not join our camp. يُجَازِيكَ جَدِّي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ My grandfather, the Holy Prophet, will reward you on the Day of Judgment. When did this letter arrive? It arrived one lunchtime. Habib was sitting down eating with his wife. His wife chokes in the middle of the lunch. She, she chokes. When she choked, she said, I think there will be a letter from someone Kareem. When, as soon as she finished saying that, someone knocked the door of the house of Habib. Habib went, opened the door. He saw a man standing there. Oh man, what do you want? He said, I am the messenger of my master, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. The Imam has sent you a letter. Habib, as soon as he hears the name of Imam Hussein, takes the letter, kisses the letter, and places it on his eyes. He opens the letter, he reads that Imam Hussein is asking him to join his camp. Habib knows if he speaks about this issue, the security services will come and capture him. So he says to the messenger, thank you very much. Please send my salams to the Imam and inform him that he shall receive my reply as soon as possible. He enters the house. His wife says, who was at the door? He says, this was the messenger of my master, Abi Abdullah al Hussein. He is asking me to join him. What do you think, my wife? Now, here is a noble wife. There are times where the wife helps the husband in noble things. Here, the wife says, you're asking me? Raihanatu Rasulillah. The beloved grandson of the Holy Prophet is asking you to go to his Nusra 
to go and help him in Karbala. He is calling for your support. Oh Habib, and you are asking me for my opinion? By Allah, oh Habib, if you do not go to Karbala, I shall dress the clothing of men and I shall go to Karbala and sacrifice my soul for the grandson of the Holy Prophet. Then Habib was pleased as soon as he heard this from his wife. He said, thank you. Jazakillah khaira. Look after my children. Moments later, the door rang again. He opened the door. Who were they? They were his tribal members. He was the head of his tribe. They came in. They said, oh Habib, we have received news that you are going to join Hussein ibn Ali. What do you need to do that for? Don't bring us problems. Habib said, no, who said I'm going to Karbala? I am not. They said, are you sure? He said, yes. They went away. His wife heard the conversation. She came to him. She said, oh Habib, have you changed your mind? Habib said, no. I have not changed my mind. But these people, they will go and form against me. Habib waited until night fell. He came to his servant. He said to his servant, you take my horse, go to the outskirts of Kufa, stay in my farm. Habib had a farm outside Kufa. He said, I shall meet you there. Wait for me, I will come. The servant goes. Habib, in the middle of the night, leaves to go towards his farmland. As he was getting closer to the farmland, he hears his servant. His servant thought that his master is not going to come. His servant was feeding the horse and he started speaking to the horse. He says, oh horse, by Allah, if my servant doesn't come, I shall ride you and go to Karbala. By Allah, I shall sacrifice myself for my master Hussein. Habib heard. He said, what are you saying? He said, oh master, I was saying that if you don't arrive, I shall go to Karbala. Habib said, Jazakallah khair, you are free to go. The servant said, oh Habib, I have served you for many years. I have eaten from your dish and now that you are going to Karbala to serve Imam Hussein alayhi salam, you are telling me you are free to go by Allah I shall never leave you to go alone. The servant goes with Habib. Habib ibn Mubahir arrives on the sixth day of Muharram. Imam Hussein alayhi salam had 12 flags. On his way to Karbala, he distributed these flags, but there was one more flag. The companions used to come and tell, tell the Imam, oh Imam, honor me to carry this last flag. The Imam used to say to them, no, this flag has a carrier and he is on his way towards me. Abi Abdullah al Hussein arrives in Karbala and waits. On the sixth day, Habib ibn Mubahir arrives. He comes down from his horse, starts smelling the soil of Karbala until he comes to Aba Abdullah al Hussein. Imam says, Man hada? Habib says, This is your servant, Habib. Habib, this is you. Ahlan bika ya Habib. If you can reduce the volume a little bit, brothers. Ahlan bika ya Habib. Lady Zainab listens to the conversation. 
she asks, who is this new person? They tell her, this is Habib ibn Mudahir al-Asadi. Zainab says, this is Habib, the companion of my father, Ali ibn Abi Talib. They say, yes, oh Zainab, this is Habib. He has fulfilled his duties and he has come to Karbala to stand alongside your brother Hussein and to protect you, the sister of Hussein. Lady Zainab says, oh brother Abbas, go to Habib and say to Habib, oh Habib, the daughter of Ali says her salams. Abel Fadl al-Abbas comes to Habib. He says, oh Habib, welcome, oh Habib. We have been waiting for you, oh Habib. Habib, I have a message for you. From who, oh Abbas? Habib, the daughter of Ali Zainab, sends her salam and says, welcome to Karbala, oh Habib. Habib, as soon as he heard that the daughter of Ali ibn Abi Talib has sent her salam, he sat on the plains of Karbala. He started taking some soil and he placed it on his head. He said, what a time that the daughter of Ali has to come to Karbala and has to send her salams to Habib on the day of Ashura. Habib comes forward. He stands in front of Abi Abdullah. He says, oh Imam, would you give permission to your companions to go to the battlefield? Habib was in charge of the companions. The companions start charging towards the battlefield one by one. One. Every time one companion will fall on the plains of Karbala, he will join Abi Abdullah to go next to that companion. One time, Muslim Ibn Awsaj, a very dear friend to Habib, goes to the battlefield, fights like a warrior, he falls to the ground. Habib joins Imam Hussein to go besides Muslim Ibn Habib says, O oh Muslim, if I knew that I will stay after you, if I knew that I will live, I would have asked you to give me your wasiyya, to tell me whatever you need. Here, Muslim says, I know, Habib, you are going to sacrifice for your life, sacrifice for Abi Abdullah, but I want to give you, I want to ask you one request. He says, oh Muslim, what is your request? Muslim says, it is narrated that he pointed towards Abi Abdullah and he says, oh Habib, alayka bihad al gharib Oh Habib, do not let Hussein be alone. It was time for Habib to go to the battlefield. Habib comes to Abba Abdullah he hugs Imam Hussein. He says, oh Imam, please give me permission. I would like to go to the battlefield. Imam grants him permission and he goes to the battlefield. He fights like a warrior. One by one, he used to kill the enemies of Allah. But one time, one of the enemies charged behind Habib and he had a dagger and he stabbed Habib. Habib fell to the ground. Another enemy of Allah. Notice that Habib was trying to stand up. He came and he striked Habib with his sword on his head. Habib fell to the ground. A third enemy of Allah came and separated Habib's head from his body. Rahim Allah man nada wa habiba Rahim Allah man nada wa husayna Bismika al-Azim al-A'zim 
يا الله العز الاجل الاكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ثبت قلوبنا على محبة وولاية محمد وآل محمد ثبت قلوبنا على البراءة من أعداء محمد وآل محمد يا الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا ويكشف السوء أما يجيب المضطر إذا دعا Brothers and sisters, raise your voices. Amma yujibol. Amma yujibol. Mudhtar idha da'a. Wa yakshifu suu. Amma yujibol. Mudhtar idha da'a. Wa yakshifu suu. Ya Allah. اللهم أرض عنا إمام زماننا اللهم عجل في فرج مولانا صاحب العصر والزمان اللهم احفظ شيعة أمير المؤمنين يا الله We ask Allah سبحانه وتعالى to hasten the reappearance of our awaited Imam يا الله وإلى أرواح المؤمنين والمؤمنات من مات على الإيمان رحم الله من قرأ سورة المباركة الفاتحة مع الصلوات